from the Huntington Bank Studio. This is Colts 360. Lucas Oil, we're back! Week one, let's go! Week one, yeah! Woo! Woo! Ah! Ooh, it's week one. Happy to have you guys back. Let's go. Bring the juice. Week one. You know what time it is. Practice how you play, baby. Practice how you play. It's week one. <laughs> it's week one. It is. Hi. Hi, guys. It's week one. It, and it's home. It's home. So I. We, well, nah, ah, we need Lucas Oil, like jumping, jumping, okay? Like we need to rout it, we need to scare people, okay? All right guys, gotta go. Big hype, big hype, big concert. Week one is finally upon us as the Colts prepare to open the regular season for 2021 at home against the Seattle Seahawks and the team looking to win their first season opener in the Ballard Reich era. The last time the Horseshoes won their opening game of the regular season was back in 2013. And last week, general manager Chris Ballard met with the media to address the expectations and outlook headed into the regular season. I mean, I say this every year, you got to go prove it, you got to go earn it. Doesn't matter really now. You know, I mean, you know, I can think it's like after the draft when everybody's all jacked up and excited. Oh man, we, you know, we just hit a home run, but then reality hits you in the face when they have to actually strap it up and play. I do think we'll get better as we go along during this season. Um, and I think that's one of the things that I really appreciate about our coaching staff. You know, they continue to coach and work and the fundamentals and the technique and the things you need to work on to get better. We work them all season and I think that's critical. Um, and, but I like where we're at. I like where we're at. Optimism and excitement plentiful across the fan base ahead of the season opener with a defense aiming to be destructive yet again, a powerful contingent in the run game and a new quarterback aiming to ignite the offense with a wealth of weapons and Colts Productions is getting Colts Nation hype for the season opener. There's a good football team in Indy. This is an 11-5 football team last year. That is very much so the same team back, but more talented. People were saying, hey, are the Indianapolis Colts in the Super Bowl conversation? They are a very talented football team and they're right there in the AFC. You just look at their roster top to bottom. They've only gotten stronger. Every year's different. What you did last year doesn't mean anything. Doesn't matter. We're home. This is a very, very well-run franchise. Has a great locker room. A coach who's tremendously respected. Let me go back to the locker room. You know, one of the things I hear a lot, players say this to me, coaches say this. Literally, this is said to me over a hundred times. It's different here. There's something different here. I ask myself the question, what is it? What's different? No, no, no! It's a vibe, right? It's a vibe. You feel it. It's like a harmony. Everybody's got their instrument to play. When we all play it right together, it's a sweet vibe, man. And it shows up every day. It echoes through my head all the time. Don't flinch. No matter what happens, don't flinch. We're on a mission. Our goal is to win games. Our mission is to win a championship. What's gonna be our mindset with that? It's gonna be whatever it's thinking takes. <laughs> whatever it takes. Believe and know that we're one of the teams that can get to the top. It's a big moment, but what you have to do is don't let the moment get too big. You have to dial it down and make your world small and focus on the details, focus on the play-to-play -play details. Still ahead, Coach Reich previews the battle with Seattle and setting the tone for the season with a strong start at home. That's next on Colts 360. He looked good today, you see him? I thought he was really sharp. The ball was coming out quick with accuracy. He was connecting on all cylinders today.
time no see. Back now on Colts 360 and joined by head coach Frank Reich. Coach, we just saw that great highlight package of Carson Wentz from back in training camp. And just this past week, he's able to get in there with Quentin Nelson and Ryan Kelly, taking all those first team reps finally after much anticipation. How has he looked in that limited time you've been able to have working ahead to Seattle? Yeah, he's looked good. Um, you know, we've said this from the start. You feel his energy when he's out on the field. You feel the command that he has of the offense. You know, he's worked very hard, even in the time he hasn't been in there, to stay up mentally with things, continue to rehab, all that stuff. So uh, feel really good where we're at. And he had the foot procedure, of course, and had that time away, came back, then had to miss a couple of days as well. But he mentioned that even with that long, uh, long weekend you had over Labor, Labor Day, you gave the guys Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Carson reiterated he'd be in the building, he'd be rehabbing, putting in the work. What evidence was there of the work he was putting in even during those few days that the team had away, the work he put in individually when you guys got back at it on Monday? Yeah, I mean, he looked great in practice, uh, you know, just – physically th threw the ball really well, um, moved well. And again, you know, we always, every day that we push it physically and he does more and more, you know, you just, you're not holding your breath, but you just want to make sure, hey, the next day we're good. You know, there's going to be some soreness, and I think we all know there's going to be soreness on the foot. But, uh, you know, we're just, you know, you go day to day and you just can't have any major setbacks, and we haven't had that. So, um, you know, we're really excited. Speaking of limiting the setbacks, Eric Fisher activated off that COVID-19 list. And prior to that, we saw him putting in significant work on the sidelines and what he was able to do off on the side during practice availability. What's that timeline like? What's realistic for the return of Eric Fisher in the regular season? Yeah, I mean, he was, like you said, Larry, he was doing some phenomenal work on the sideline. I, I just felt like he was way ahead of schedule physically with the Achilles. Um, and that was really encouraging. And then obviously getting COVID and being out 10 days, um, you know, that didn't hurt things as far as his Achilles because that had already been healed. But really, it just, I think, hurts a little bit conditioning wise and that force and that stuff. So we just got to get him out there a few days, kind of test to see where he's at physically conditioning wise, you know, and then just getting back into the football mode. So we'll accelerate it as fast as we can. We heard an important update last week from General Manager Chris Ballard on the status of T.Y. Hilton, who had surgery on his neck. He had that disc issue. And Chris said that T.Y. felt immediate relief from that. What conversations have you had with T.Y. on where he is and how motivated he is to get back this season as he's able to recover from that procedure? Yeah, I've talked to him just about every day. He's doing well. Like you said, like Chris said, he, he did have some immediate relief. And it's still a neck surgery. So, you know, I mean, um, so there's going to be some recovery time and some soreness and that kind of thing. But he's doing well. Um, you know, he's, his presence is still going to be felt. I'm sure you know, he'll get in here in the locker room before too long and make his presence felt. From the most veteran guy on the roster to the youngest guys on the roster, want to talk about your rookie, rookie class because you have a great one that had an outstanding preseason. Guys like Quiddy Pay, Mike Strawn, Kylan Granson. For them this week, how do you basically temper the excitement of what is a monumental step in their NFL careers and their football careers playing in that first NFL regular season game, but also trying to treat it as if it's something they've been doing nearly their entire lives to prepare for? Yeah, that is that is the tension, the healthy tension, the good tension is at one hand, it's, hey guys, it's still a football field. It's the same game you've been playing since you've been a kid. So just go do what you do. Um, but at you, you'd be fooling yourself if you think walking out into the Lucas Oil Stadium for your first NFL game isn't going to create a little nerve. So, um, you know, just take some deep breaths and enjoy the moment and, and just get past those initial butterflies. You'll settle in. Don't worry. It's all good. You got you don't try to be a superstar. You got a great team. Just do your job. You start out with a week one opponent in the Seattle Seahawks, not necessarily a team that you play frequently, but it is a team that has a lot of familiarity in terms of 11th year with Pete Carroll at the helm as the head coach, 10th year now for Russell Wilson. He has a lot of weapons in that receiving game to call upon that he's had for numerous seasons. How beneficial is it to have a team that has a lot of carryover, although it's one you may not see head to head a whole lot when you're preparing for an offense, especially like that one? Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, it, we, you can, Larry, you're exactly right. You can look at the film and, you know, this is kind of who they are and what they do. Now, you know, they do have a new offensive coordinator yeah. coming from a different system, so they'll have some new wrinkles there offensively, I'm sure. Um, but Russell Wilson is, you know, he's still an elite quarterback and, you know, just a unique player and a unique person. 
Um, you know, a lot of respect to him and, and of course, to Pete Carroll and that team. So on defense, they, they were a very strong team at the end of the, the whole year, but especially the last eight games, they were pretty dominant. So, um, you know, th this is a great test for us coming out of the gate. Um, you know, we're excited, obviously, that we get to play at home and it'll be a good challenge. You mentioned that challenge. I want to go to a couple stats on Russell Wilson. He had the second most scrambles in the NFL, most yards uh, scrambling and averaged eight and a half yards per scramble in 2020. Quite the challenge that it is. But if there is a defense that is primed for a challenge, it is certainly yours. What is exciting for your defense about coming out of the gates, playing an offense like this, playing a quarterback who is so tough to contain? Yeah, and that, what's crazy is it's not like Russell Wilson is 25 years old anymore, <laughs> and he still has those stats. That's what's incredible about the guy. He's got such great vision, great elusiveness, and he's always keeping his eyes down the field to create the big play. So um, we know that's a challenge. But we also know with, with guys who do what Russell does, they, he also gets sacked. You know, I mean, he doesn't get away every time. And so, you know, we gotta, it's got to be a team effort. It's got to be everybody hustling to the ball. Um, everybody staying disciplined in your coverages, knowing that he can break loose and get the ball downfield. So um, I, I think it's a great challenge. You know a guy like Russell Wilson is going to make a couple plays here and there. You just have to stay with it and be patient. And you get to open the season at home. You're looking for that first win. We know how imperative it is to try to start the season 1-0. and How much do you have to take advantage of everything that you have playing at home, that home crowd? How do you utilize all of those things? How do you put that message out there to your team to capitalize on everything they have at their disposal to start things off strong? Yeah, no, I think it's just dialing in on the detail. You know, like you said, it's a big moment, but what you have to do is don't let the moment get too big. You have to dial it down and make your world small and focus on the details, focus on the play to play details and the execution, and then the results will take care of itself. And you, you also have to prepare, I think, the team for, hey, the highs and lows of a game. We're gonna have the fans in the stands. That's gonna be to our advantage. But you got some pretty big playmakers on that other side, not only on offense, but in all three phases. So they're gonna make a few plays. Just let's hang together. It's a 60-minute game, and uh, good thing that we're playing at home. Dial in on the details. Dial up the crowd noise. You heard it, Colts Nation. <laughs> they need you loud, especially when uh, that Seattle offense is there on the field. Just a wave of 83 jerseys going like this, you know. Oh, my God, it's huge! Yeah, yeah, it's going to be pandemonium. Coming up, rookie Kylan Branson on preparing for his NFL regular season debut and explains a Hoosier homecoming for the tight end out of Texas. That's next on Colts 360. D. Leonard, where's the camera? You want me to be D. Leonard? Damn, I don't even know what Darius do I want to be. Like, Darius in terms of what? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Lock in. Woo! Let's go, baby! Hi. <laughs> in the Buddha, he's like, Woo! 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 You can't do that. That's what I'm doing. That's my impression. You gotta take that easy. That's my impression. You gotta take that easy. That's my impression. Hi. Don't tell nobody I said this, but is this one day out of the year where he dresses up in purple and gold and he barks like a dog? Don't tell nobody. There you go. Hey! Hey! You know what I'm saying? Hi. <laughs> Back now on Colts 360, joined by rookie Kylan Granson, who is ready to make his NFL regular season debut. I don't say NFL debut because you were hard at work in the preseason. We'll get to that in a second. But we heard Coach Reich when he was talking about this season and in general, the anticipation of this season. He said, it's a vibe. What's the vibe in the building over the course of this week, getting ready to play that opener? Oh, I mean, you know, it's the first, the first week, week one. So, you know, bullets are gonna be flying, it's live. Seattle's coming to our house. And, you know, it, like when he said it's a vibe, it's just the aura in the building is just, it's like there's electricity. I feel like there's a thunderstorm <laughs> going on. Like my hair's standing up. The vets are locked in, all those rooks, we're keyed in. I mean, everyone's just ready to go, ready to fly around and play some football. And Kylan, you proved that readiness in the preseason. Look at the stats right here from those three games. Five catches for 39 yards, 72 snaps in total between offense and special team. 25 of your 39 yards came 
after the catch. When you look at the progress you made over the course of the preseason, what stands out to you? Oh, man, I just feel like, as far as I'm concerned, I feel like the game really slowed down. Um, and I just, I was just having fun out there. It was less worried about making mistakes. I was like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna catch the ball and I'm gonna run as fast as I can. I'm gonna get hit. This is the NFL. So I'm not gonna worry about all that. I'm gonna worry about the film when we're done. I'm just gonna play fast. And that's all I did. I just played fast, trusted my rules and executed, so. Yeah. You come out of a high school in Austin, Texas, Westlake High School that has produced a lot of NFL guys, Drew Brees, Nick Foles among them, your teammate, of course, in Sam Ellinger among those as well. And then when you got to SMU, you became the career reception, career receiving touchdowns leader by a tight end at SMU, right? It's, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. you're on a few <laughs> of the record books there. At what point was it in your football career that you realized that playing professionally was something you could achieve? So it wasn't until after my junior year, so my first year at SMU of actually playing, because I had to sit out for a year. It was after that first year of playing, like I heard like, you know, whispers and all that. I didn't really think anything of it until I started like, where you got to like meet with agents. And I met a couple and they're like, hey, so we think, and I'm like, oh wow, this is really happening. <laughs> wow, I, you know, at, at first I was just like, yeah, I'm just gonna pl keep playing football, you know, and then w when it's done, it's done, you know, come to the decision when I come to that. And then I found out, you know, one of the biggest dreams I ever had might actually come true. And I was like, oh my God, don't freak out. <laughs> <laughs> and when you did become a draft pick, if anyone missed the previous interviews that we've done when you were drafted by the Indianapolis Colts, we're gonna catch them up to speed because your aunts who were in the room when you got that call were exclaiming, he's going home because you were actually born in central Indiana, spent part of your childhood in DeMott, correct? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it is a Hoosier homecoming, week one for you. How many Granson family members, friends, will be in the stands when you guys take on the Seattle Seahawks. I imagine you'll see a whole section, just a wave of 83 jerseys going like this, you know. Oh my God, it's him! Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be pandemonium. There's gonna be a grandson, yeah. It, you, if you see someone at the stadium and they're wearing 83, probably a family member of mine. That's, so that's a whole vibe hi. in and of itself, yeah, right there. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> All right, if you could draw up the play to score your first NFL touchdown, what would the play be? What would the play be? Hmm. Oh man, there's so many good ways to go in, you know, like you got your standard, you know, goal ball. It's just a fade right into your pocket and then you just like stand in there under the lights or you got the one where it's a corner route and you got to go up top, moss a dude or, or you got a screen play where you take it, you make a couple juke moves and, and you know what, if I score, I score. I don't, I don't really have a dream play, I just want to get in the end zone. So there's too many options to pick. And you have created quite the chemistry with all the different quarterbacks that you've worked with. I mean, four different guys since you got in this building between Carson Wentz, Jacob Eason, Sam Ellinger, and Brett Hundley. Since Carson has been back, what has been clicking with the offense? What's the biggest difference you see that he impacts this offense? Experience. Experience. I mean, it's he's cool-headed. You know, he's we got our timing, our pace. We're starting to really click up. And, man, it's just like a well-oiled machine. Just bam. Bam, march, 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 touchdown. So it's just easy, you that's, know? <laughs> that's how you're drawing it up, right there. Yeah, right there, that's it, <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> we always hear so much about how Coach Reich likes to utilize his tight ends. That's something he shares with your quarterback in Carson Wentz. What excites you most about this offense, knowing one, how Coach Reich spreads the ball around to a lot of different guys, and also how heavily he utilizes the guys at your position? Oh, I mean, I'm so excited, because I mean, we got, athletes all over the field. I mean, you got Pittman, you got Pascal, you got Ashton, you got you got um Jack Doyle, you got Mo, you got me. And then <laughs> and you go you got Mega Strawn out there. I mean, the the options for Carson are limitless. And I feel like he's just going to feed us all. It's going to be like Thanksgiving. We're just all going to eat, all going to have a great time, you know. Seattle is, you know, we're gonna bring we're gonna bring the noise when we come home. Hey, Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner, come hungry oh, on yeah, Sunday baby. afternoon to Lucas Oil Stadium. <laughs> Absolutely. Week one not only welcomes the return of the regular season, but also the return of fans to full capacity at Lucas Oil Stadium. And in anticipation of that 60,000 strong for the home opener, the players explain just how eager they are to take the field once again in front of Colts Nation.
Ever since rookie year, you know, Lucas Oil has been a dream to play in. It was weird last year not having fans, but we feed off you guys. This fan base brings the juice. It gives us the energy that we need. In my mind, I call them the 12th man because they could really make a difference in the game. It's like they got to play against all of us, not just the guys on the field. When the team first runs out that tunnel, you hear the roar of the crowd. The smoke's going and the music's playing and the fans are cheering. You know, at that point, it makes you really want to put it all on the line for the team. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> you guys make Lucas Oil Stadium what it is, so we're excited to have you back. We're excited to have you guys pack that stadium and make it loud. Need it loud, need it loud, need it loud. <laughs>